Court does call the case of the people versus George White. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Sam Bernstein with on behalf of Mr. White. Thank you. Permission to practice is granted. Thanks for jumping in on my line. Oh, <laughs> I was so worried about my line. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. I know. I know, it's um, first day. No. <laughs> She's like a veteran at this point. I know. I know. I don't even know why she asked. Right? I mean, she has to. Permission to practice for myself, too, Your Honor. That's... <laughs> that one would be denied. You know that. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Practice, what are we doing on this? Uh, I'm just jumping on the case, Your Honor. I'm asking for an adjournment. To, um, yeah, maybe approach. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's, Monday. it's Monday. I have two cases. Really? <laughs> Ian already said it's the short talk. It's the longest. Uh, okay, hold on. I have to stop. Uh, she's slow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Because he just started walking. I know. Good. Yes, All right. Recall the case of People versus George White. Sam Bernstein again for Mr. White, Your Honor. All right. Uh, reference we before. I passed the case. We had a bench conference about some phone calls that were made, and I let you talk to your client. Also, that there at least was an indication that the defendant may have been within one half mile of the excluded zone. We called over to community corrections. They've indicated that there are no violations at this point, so I'm not going to deal with that. Um, I, I can address the phone calls if the court would like. Yes, please. Um, there is a, something of a story, and um, we're not going to litigate the um, probate stuff matters, but so there's been a very stressful situation going on with George White's um, mother being sick in the hospital. Um, uh, apparently, he has like an, an alternate medical power of attorney. The complaint he does? Of, he does, yes. Okay. Or, or medical power of attorney. I don't know how to phrase it, okay? Um, well, let me just go first and we'll he's, see. He's got the medical power. Yes. Okay. But I, I think the the victim might also have like a medical power of attorney or a claimed medical power of attorney. And so he said that he was like signing paperwork for like an immediate surgery and that he was like stopped in the middle of signing it. And they said that the other person, the, the victim was like wanting something different for the mother and so he says that he gave his phone to a nurse who made the calls to the victim that he did not call her. And that when he learned that she was there, he later went into like another section of the hospital to like stay far away from the situation. So you're saying, just so that I'm clear, all six of the calls were from that? Yes, he says they were made like back to back to back. That from... was on the fourth. Right. But right. what about the second? I don't know about this. No, I don't know. Um, but he he says he told me he has he has no wish to, to speak with her at all, um, that he hasn't spoken with her um, and that he doesn't want to go near her, or have anything to do with her whatsoever, whatsoever. So he definitely doesn't it wasn't like a don't show up to court kind of situation. He just doesn't want to have contact with her whatsoever. Um, it seems like there may be some sort of like kind of probate ish. Uh, issue with like medical powers of attorney and who may or may not have power or something, but the appropriate form to litigate that wouldn't be, I don't think it'd be judge Simpson. It would be um, a, another forum. And that's not really for today, I would suggest, but um, I think that's sort of like the, the backdrop of what kind of what happened here. But I mean, either way, I mean, he's not supposed to have any contact with her and I, th I think he knows that, and he, he doesn't wish to, to speak with her on, on any basis. Yes, I'll let you talk. One of the calls was on March 2nd, and then on the 4th, one of the calls that was made was two hours before the back-to-back -back calls that were supposedly from the nurse. We would be concerned with the contact with the victim. I won't stop you from talking if you want okay. to contact. First and foremost, she gave a debt while I was in jail. She went a dep one of the depths in jail. I was in the tank right there. I didn't even arrange it. Gave him his her number to give to me. Never contacted her. I don't want to. She's a devil. She's evil, like my no, mom. Okay, look. But anyways, the situation at the hospital was 
when she got transported from Dearborn uh, to uh, Royal. She being who? My mother. And I was there with her. She vomited four buckets of blood. She was going to die right there. But they okay. Got her to okay. To get okay. Stuff. Sir. Sir. Now, during that exact moment. Judges, judges talk to you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I agree, Mr. Bernstein, that I'm not going to sit here to litigate the probate matter in terms of a power of attorney, but the victim's relationship to the defendant is what? Ex wife. How about we can't interrupt the court, please? Go. Was the power of attorney granted after your divorce? The power of attorney was verbally given in Dearborn and fraudulently taken. Can you just answer my question? Sorry, yes, it was verbally yes. Before the divorce. Well, there was no power of attorney before the divorce. We've been divorced for a year and a half. It was given to me at Dearborn. So no. Oh no. Thank you, Mr. Jeez, I'm All right. Well, without doing more checking, I, I don't know that I can figure out these phone calls. I, I understand what you're saying, Miss. I I don't want the victim contacted from your phone at all, ever. Am I clear? Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, what part of Carpenter Road do you live on? I live on, actually, it's right there. What are your cross streets? I'm right in the middle between Washington and Packard. Are you in a an apartment complex? It's a duplex. I'm unit one on the bottom of the house. Uh, unit two is upstairs. Where about what's right next to you? Uh, Red Lobster. Pardon? Red Lobster. Can you? I'll just do. Well, And I wasn't going to deal with anything regarding the uh, the tether, and although there's no violation, I'm going to give him the, the language used by the defendant regarding the alleged victim. I'm going to make it real clear so that we don't have any problems with this. <laughs> the problem with in part the GPS tether and there is clearly some uh, given the defendant's comments there's clearly a great deal of animosity between these two um, the difficulty comes in that they also reside probably less than a mile from each other, but if you were to just draw a straight line. Um, and if you were, one were driving, then certainly that would be it. So I'm going to give the defendant a block that you're not to enter into. If you shop within that block or this area that I give you, you're going to have to find some other place to shop. Just mm -hmm. now, so the whole time I've never crossed to the other side of Carpenter. Um, I've always tried to stay on my side. I've never crossed over. Um, so but would that include the Kroger right there in the CBS? I haven't even given it yet. Kroger's okay. just Drawing a straight line, he is not to go um, east of Carpenter Road. The block that I'm creating, which is the exclusion zone, is east of Carpenter, south of Washtenaw, west of Gulfside, north of Ellsworth. So so that we're clear, so you're going to have to stay on that west side of Carpenter Road. You're not to travel on the east 
eastbound Carpenter at all. So if you've got to go around the block to get to your place, you're just going to have to go around the block. Am I clear? Is that a yes? Yes. I'm, I'm trying to picture it in my head. What are you trying to picture in your head? So like you say crossing Carpenter. What about? And then it hits Washington off. Are you talking about that that corner right there would be like exclusion? Or does that also cross over to the other side of Washington? I, I, I can picture it in my mind. I'll show you on a Google Maps after. Thank you. It's like a block. I get it. Well, I just don't want to get it wrong. Just to get it wrong. You know, the gas station that's on the corner of Washington and Carpenter. Yeah, there's two of them right close here. You can go on Washtenaw at that gas station, either direction, but you can't go south of Washtenaw. So, you know, Washtenaw down the golf side, you can't go south. You can't go into that area. Okay. On golf side, you can't go east or west. And then Ellsworth, where Meyer is, that includes that block. Mr. Bernstein will show it to you, I'm sure. I have it right here. We'll have it all laid out. You got it? Please, yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. That's that block, that block, you cannot go in that block. Okay. okay. So he's saying if there's stores along there that you like to go to, you're going to have to go to different stores. What if they're on my side? Your side? Your side? Fine. Okay. So you, just, you can't go to any of those places between those streets, okay? You can right, go so to Kroger, Home Depot, and Lowe's. So like there's a gas station there and there. I can't go to Meyer. But go to that. You can go can't to, go to Target. One on bike towards this jail on the side of the road. No, you can't go to Hobby Lobby either, George, okay? No, no, no. Um, you can go to that gas station. You cannot go to that gas station, okay? I'm going to email you. In that block. Yes. I just want to be clear. It's crystal. It's awesome. crystal clear, Your Honor. Crystal clear. Thank you. I've signed the order okay. uh, creating that exclusion zone. And then we need to adjourn this out. We almost were here long enough to get to that date. Right. What's your name? My next day? March 18th or April 1st. Which would work better for you, counsel? Man, I was going to... I'm sorry, Your Honor, I was going to ask for the 25th. That's not available? That's not available. Um, 18th is fine, Your Honor. We'll take that. Thank you. I'll adjourn this to March 18th.